Before we jump into the sermon, I'm going to do what I like to call a pastor's minute. Something that doesn't necessarily fit into the sermon, but it's something that God has burdened me with, and I want to talk with you about it as your pastor. I have been deeply moved by what has been going on in the last eight days over in the Middle East. I have dear friends that live there. I have dear friends that have tried to get out of there but haven't yet, and I have others that have chosen to stay. Needless to say, it is tumultuous at best. There is no shortage of opinions about what is going on over there. There's no shortage of opinions about what is being done or what is not being done. Is it a prophecy fulfillment? And if so, which one? Is it not at all? All kinds of questions are being scattered all around the internet. So before I go and stake my life on the hill of it's exactly this one particular text, what I want you to do is I want us to zoom out just a little bit, and I want us to look at what's really going on. I want us to kind of just get a pulse of what I believe is happening. It goes back to May 14, 1948, Israel became its own sovereign state. I believe that on that day in 1948, the beginning of the prophetic end times began. We need to be paying very careful attention to what is going on over in the Middle East because it directly affects our lives today. And I just, just spoiler alert, just so you know, the USA is not actually in the Bible when it comes to the end times, but Israel surely is. And so we need to be paying attention to what is going on across the pond. So what does it really mean, what's going on? Do I have that bullet answer? No, no, no. But what I want to do is, as your pastor, we need to talk through what this actually means for us today. It means that we need to be living our lives genuinely on purpose. Thousands of people have been killed in the last week. They didn't get that 11th hour to say, sorry, Jesus, please forgive me for living like a heathen. They didn't get that moment to repent. It means that we need to be living our lives in such a way that regardless of when Jesus comes back for his kids, we are ready. We are living our lives in such a way that he says, nice work, come home. It means we're ready for him. Like many people right now in the Middle East, they are plagued with questions and they don't have answers to them. But guess what? We actually do have this answer. His name is Jesus. The Jews will someday know him as Yeshua HaMashiach. That's who they will declare as their Savior. And I pray that that day comes very, very soon because he actually is the answer to all of this turmoil. He is the one that makes sense of all of this. All of the prophecies were written about Yeshua. All of the prophecies were written for Yeshua. And he is the one that is fulfilling them today. So then now, what are we supposed to do? It's going on over there. Can we throw money at it? You bet. If there's good organizations that you want to support, fine. You go right ahead. But what are we supposed to do here? We're told what to do. We're supposed to be praying for Israel. We pray for peace in the Middle East, which we'll be doing here shortly together as a church. But for us here, besides prayer, what else we got to be doing? I'm going to tell you right now as your pastor, you better be living like Jesus is coming back today. Because there is no guarantee that we get to leave this church today. And that's not fear-mongering, that's love. See, I don't want to be in heaven without you guys. I I want to be partying with you at the banquet table. I want to be doing all this forever. And I don't want none of you not there. So Jesus already warned us about what's going on. Luke 21 He says, now when these things begin to take place, he's talking about end times events. He says, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He says, pay attention, I'm coming back for my kids. So the question for you is, are you ready for Jesus to come back? Or are you just hoping for just a little more time? You got a few more wild oats to sow. Or are you ready? See, we can know all about prophecy. We can spend our entire lives studying the book of Revelation and understanding what all of it means. And it's worthless unless you're living your life in anticipation of him coming back. So do I have all the answers about exactly what's going on in the Middle East? No, not a chance. Nobody does. But our lives have to be lived in light of the fact that he's moving faster than we thought was coming. It's happening before our very eyes. You can go Zechariah, Amos, Mal. You can look at all the different prophecies. It's happening. It's not enough to know. It's enough to do. 
It's enough to get our motives into action, our lives on purpose, living holy lives, anticipating Jesus coming back. What's that song? People get ready. Jesus is coming. Soon we'll be going home. Are we ready? Because I believe this was a wake-up call for all of us. Things aren't going swimmingly anymore. So I want to pray together over the people of Israel, together as a corporate church this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly asking, first and foremost, for your peace over Israel. Thousands of people dead, displaced, families destroyed, more wars going on, more bombs, more heartache, more loss, more brokenness. And God, we just pray that you, and you promise us, God, you have this peace that just envelops, it covers in a way that we cannot fabricate, in a way that we cannot make up, and it only comes from you. And we pray that you would bring that over the Middle East even this morning. God, we pray against the national and the domestic terrorism groups that are wreaking havoc. We pray that you would fumble up their plans and that you would bring in your grace on top of it. God, we pray for all the protests around the world that they would subside. Everybody taking a stand and getting all caught up and angry and, and, and going about the wrong way. Lord, I pray that you would redirect them towards your son, Jesus. I pray that you would redirect their hearts towards what is really going on. God, I pray that you would make the name of Jesus, Yeshua. I, may, I pray that you would make that name known boldly over there. Not in a cursory manner, but God, in a submission manner for your people, that you would call them home and you would bring them to you. God, I pray that you would use this time to move people's hearts back to you. Not to be hardened because of the pain and turmoil. God, I pray as though David did in Psalm 122, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and may the peace be secure for those who love you. Peace be within your walls, Jerusalem, and security within your towers. God, this is what we pray in Jesus Christ. I want to add this. I pray for your grace. I pray for your salvation. I pray for your mercy to fall on all people. Be it Jews, be it Palestinians, God, save the terrorists, save the Biden administration so they can make better decisions. God, anybody that has not bowed a knee to you, I pray that you would use this time to draw them to you. All of this is for your glory and for our good. And in Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Amen.